All right, we're back at South by Southwest and all the way from Provo, Utah. We got the fictionist. Please introduce yourself. My name's Robbie. I sing and play guitar. I'm Brandon. I play guitar and miscellany. Stuart, sing and play the bass. I'm Aaron. I play drums. So who's the founding member? How did this band get together? Uh, well, us three were friends back in high school, so okay. it's been a long time, and then we crossed paths with Aaron through a different uh, former member, and now we're ready to go. So, so you kind of came up through high school knowing each other? Yeah, yeah. Who, who were your musical heroes? Who inspired you to want to make music yourself? Uh, when I was a really little kid, I would say, like, the Beatles and my brothers, because they played in bands. Yeah. I'd have to say Zeppelin and Radiohead and... Uh, a bunch of others. I grew up listening to a lot of singer-songwriter stuff, like Carole King and James Taylor. It was just in my family, so yeah. in my early yeah. days. A lot of 90s grunge stuff for me, Nirvana, and Smashing Pumpkins, and Soundgarden, Stunt Double Pilots. Some popular influences I've heard today, no question about it. Now, growing up in Utah, obviously it's kind of a different scene. Yeah. You know, not a whole lot of bands. You know, Neon Trees, I'm hearing a few people coming out of there, right? Yeah. What, what, what is it about Utah that makes you guys do your thing? There's kind of a fun scene there where uh, there's a lot of artful music happening, you know? People are uh, really supportive of each other and competitive in a good way, and it's making people really want to step up their game and make good music. And so there's, I think the way we fit into that is kind of like, a, like an artsy grungy 80s thing that, that no one else is really doing but um, but that also complements what everyone else is doing so uh, I mean I think that I think they're creative people everywhere and I think that um, as long as they have an outlet they'll you know they'll they'll be able to thrive and and I think that Provo has just it's found a good outlet for music for sure um, the Valor Club is a big part of that um, and, and Corey Fox the guy that runs it and um, other than that, there's just, you know, because of that and a few other things, it's a young area and there's just a lot of good outlets for it. So. I guess you can kind of do your own thing, unlike all the distractions of a L.A. or New York or all that, too. Yeah, I think isolation actually plays into it a little bit, you know. Um, at South By, there's a lot of noise going on. There's so much that you, you almost can't think sometimes. And uh, well, I guess one of the good things about being sort of uh, marooned in the West is that um, you get to know a lot of the bands really well, and you go to each other's shows. There's a real sense of community, and that really helps. Like as a songwriter, you try, you know, you're trying to hang with the best bands, trying to outdo each other. You're inspired by each other. It's really cool. Yeah, I think community is the huge, the huge part of it. Um, we're all pushing each other and kind of competing with each other in a way. Uh, not that we we don't like each other. We all help each other. We all play on each other's records, and it's really supportive. Yeah, now, tell us about your latest music and what you're most proud of achieving with that. So we were just released an album in October. It's brand new, and uh, it was great because it was. Um, we feel really strongly it's a great direction that we're headed in, and uh, so the live show is all around those songs, and we're just excited to be playing them. It's very, uh, a very song-driven album, and uh, we appreciate that. Yeah. I see you toured with a number of these bands, yeah. done shows with Imagine Dragons and Young the Giant and Neon Trees and you know Shiny Toy Guns. What what uh, was that experience like? And why, why is it so important to, you know, be good people on the road and get along with others? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a huge part of it. It's like if, if people don't like hanging out with you, then they probably won't invite you anywhere. You know what I mean? And so um, we've, we've tried to – we've always made it a point to, like, appreciate other people's music and, like, go out to shows and, and like, let them know what you're digging. And then it's like – you know, because a lot of those friends we've made in those bands, it's like – We've made friends just by supporting their music, and and then and then we hang out, and then we get to know each other better, and it's a big part of like that community we were talking about, and um, it's just being supportive. Well, people always think it's so competitive, and everybody's out to destroy the other ones, but there's probably more commonality being around creative people like this and sharing your road stories and tips. You know, what what are some of the best tips that you've heard from others? Oh man. Uh... <laughs> 
uh, I'm having a hard time thinking of. Uh, uh, well, I mean, just uh, what we've learned. I mean, you know, uh, be courteous, be friendly. Um, I mean, when you're playing a show, if you're an opening band, make sure you stay under your time. Um, you know, and and help out anybody that looks like they need some help. I mean, just kind of common sense. Be a great, you know, helpful person. You, you want to be an asset to the tour, so they want to have you back. And it's, it was very easy to deal with you guys, that kind of thing. Yeah, totally. Just being agreeable, less talk, more rock. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, well, you know, it's it's such a difficult business out there, the camaraderie uh, amongst others that are striving for common goals. Like I say, it's got, got more in common than really difference. You know, what, what, what have you found that uh, touring with other bands helps you grow? Oh, I think just uh, just listening to other bands, being being open to it. You know, when they're playing, go go out and listen to them, and and try to learn as much as you can. Be a sponge, soak up everything on the road, and th and that helps a lot. Sure, I've got one more thought on that. A lot of times when we're uh, experimenting and trying new things too, like I'll call all the people in all the different bands I know that are maybe trying a, a similar thing, and, or like setup wise or anything like that and just like pick their brains and so like people are really helpful in that way too yeah and, and when one band breaks through to another level they remember who their friends were and yeah. you might be able to pick up now obviously imagine dragons has stepped up to a, oh, yeah. like an arena level and yeah. you, you know i mean it's got to be inspiring you know to see that similar style music can reach reach a wide audience oh yeah it's, it's been really fun to see their journey i mean we uh they opened for us like a few years ago and like and we've always just been like friends that way and on the similar level so then when they kind of just broke through it was, it was really fun to watch it's crazy actually like i think sometimes we forget because it's like a lot of those bands that we're friends with we still think of them as like our friends and then it's like you meet new people in other cities and other parts of the world where they're like in love with these bands and you're like wait a second like these aren't just our friends you know it's great I'm going to ask each one of you, you know, what you've seen in the business and been through. What advice do you have to young songwriters or musicians to really find their own sound, their own style, or or stick with it to, you know, be as unique as they can? Sure. I would say that um, a lot of people have, like, a record label and, like, getting signed is the end goal. But really, like, I mean, we were previously signed to Atlantic Records. And what we found out in the business was that, like, that's not the magic bullet at all. Like, you know, you just got to keep on working. Keep on, keep on just creating from the heart and, and doing the music that you want to do. And eventually, you know, if you're doing that, if you're staying true to yourself, eventually it's going to shine through. And, and, and that's what's going to make you successful. But there's no, really, there's no real magic bullet to the music industry. I mean, just do what you do. Advice to writers and artists coming up? Um, I just put a plug in for consistency. You know, it takes time to become a great songwriter, and even the best songwriters feel like they're still on that journey. You never get there, you know? And so I think just the idea of taking pride in the craft of making music and continue doing it for the right reasons, that's all I would say. Have fun with it, you know? It's supposed to be fun. Make it fun. I'd say separate, uh, and, and this has actually been one of my challenges I've been working on a lot, is separate creation from the editing process. Just, you know, don't be worried about what is this, is this sounding good, is this not? Build on what you have and, and try to output what you can and then judge it later. And if, it, if you don't like it, nobody has to see it. I would, yeah, I would say just do it, you know, like create stuff. Because, yeah, usually people feel like, yeah, people feel like they might not be able to or whatever. And it's like the more, everyone I know who does it, it's like there's not that much special about them. It's just that they think they can do it. And so then they do it. There's always more comfort in like blending in and like standing out and being that outcast. But really it's the unique talent that stands out with artists. Yeah, exactly. I mean, everyone has their own thing to offer. So if you just do it then uh, you'll see what comes out. Thanks so much guys, really appreciate you coming out. Thanks a lot.